Dramatic new dash cam video from the patrol car of Officer Michael Slager showing the traffic stop last Saturday, moments before he shot Walter Scott. The reason for the stop is your third brake light stop. Oh, okay. Officer Slager asked Scott for his license, registration, and insurance card. I don't have Scott tells Slager he just bought the car from his neighbor. Officer Slager walks back to his patrol car. Then, about 30 seconds later, Scott bolts from his car. We now have a better idea of the entire picture regarding the shooting of an unarmed man by a police officer in South Carolina. The traffic stop that began it all and what led to the killing. But does it change anything with regard to the behavior of the now former officer involved and the actions of his fellow officers in the moments after the shooting? Let's try to put it all together. Our guest is a former sergeant in the Los Angeles Police Department where for 20 years she experienced the good and the bad of being a member of law enforcement. Her book, Black and Blue, The Creation of a Manifesto, takes readers inside the LAPD and how decisions are made. It is always a pleasure to welcome Cheryl Dorsey to Midpoint. Sergeant, it's good to talk to you again. Hi, Ed. Good to talk to you. Do me a favor if you would. Let's start out. I would take it that you have seen this video then of the initial traffic stop itself. Tell us what your first impressions are. What do you take from that? Well, my first impression is I'm wondering is this a racial profiling issue because to stop someone for a third light being inoperable is almost laughable in the middle of the day with so much more going on. And so to create a reason to engage the two male blacks that were driving a Mercedes in the middle of the day because of an inoperable light is problematic for me. And then it's exacerbated by the fact that you escalate this to a deadly force incident. Let's take it from that perspective, though, and let's take it a little bit more forward then. Are you saying that, in your opinion at least, if you look at two black males driving a Mercedes with a taillight out, that that's something that would lend you to believe that there might be racial profiling in there simply because of the car and the individuals behind the wheel? Absolutely. We know that police officers stop black men when they're driving what they believe a, a vehicle that maybe they should not be able to afford to drive. And so it happens routinely. Let's not be naive. And if you follow behind a police, uh, if a police car follows behind a citizen long enough, you're going to see them fail to signal before a left turn. You're going to see them, uh, you know, create some kind of a situation where now I've got probable cause to engage the occupants of that vehicle and let's just see what we have. All right, let's take it now one step further then. And we're only trying to get a better idea of what went on here. You can hear from the conversation involved that if you were to listen to this dispassionately, it would seem as if the driver is saying, wait a minute, I, I don't have the registration, I bought the car. Then he's coming back and saying, well, I didn't yet buy the car. So is it not fair to say that any police officer walking up, you begin to question then what you're getting from the individual in the car as far as conflicting answers? Well, absolutely. I mean, your, your, your spider senses are going to be alerted, right? Because the person seems to be uh, being dishonest and you don't know exactly why. And so let's go with um, there's missing information. You, you're driving a vehicle without the proper uh, insurance documentation. Uh, did you really buy the car? I need to run it to make sure that it's not a stolen vehicle. I'm okay with all of that. It becomes a problem when you chase someone and kill them because you're unable to catch them. Okay, now, before we get to that, and again, leaning on your expertise and what you have seen here, the individual, Mr. Scott, stays in the car, he comes out, the officer says, get back in your car. He then sits there for 30, 40 seconds, and then takes off and begins to run. As a police officer, and again, let's try and stop right there, because we're going to get to the fact here and what you pointed out with regarding the shooting itself. From a police officer's standpoint, would that not make you, would that again, your spider sense goes up because why is he running? There has to be a reason why this man is running. You would then think that it would be normal then for most officers to affect a foot chase, correct? Well, first what you want to do is you want to request backup and you want to get additional units responding to the area of this traffic stop. And I'm hoping that you've already uh, had notified dispatch of where exactly you are so it won't take long for responding officers to start heading your way. And again, you really don't know what you have. You could have something or you could have nothing. And so you want to set up a perimeter and you want to direct officers in the direction that that person is running. You want to give information that will aid them in capturing this person should you decide to pursue. But let's use a little common sense when we talk about tactics here. What do we have? What do we really know, right? 
Sure. No, that is all the point here. What do we really know? And I think that this is what people are going to say when this comes down to trial. They're going to say, what did we really know? What was the mindset of the officer? Now, I'm going to say this flat out here because I don't want there to be any misunderstanding by you or anybody else here. The shooting of a man, an unarmed man, in the manner in which it was done was absolutely despicable. It was a shooting. It was an unwarranted shooting. We absolutely all agree on that. There's no reason to pull out a gun and shoot a guy like that eight times or at least take eight shots. But is it also then not fair to say that if we back ourselves up to that one instance to where it's going from there the cop doesn't know you don't know why he's running where he's running he could be running from a felony charge and it, we're all going all over the place here he could be running from something he could be wanted on something so doesn't your cop instinct if it's a good cop instinct at least kick in right away and say i gotta get after this guy i gotta do what i can to stop him and wonder why he's running well, absolutely. I mean, and so you have an obligation to investigate this thing further because people don't typically just exit a vehicle and start running on foot unless there's a reason. And so you have an opportunity and an obligation really to find out what that is. But you have to use common sense and good judgment when you do that. And you need to be communicating to the officers that are out there to assist you so that you don't wind up in a situation where now it's one on one because we never want to be one on one or one on two. Uh, with occupants in a vehicle. We always want to have the numbers in our favor. So tactically, this thing was problematic from the very beginning. The officer ran away and left his own vehicle, right? Which is possible. I mean, there are cops who are only traveling individually. They do leave their vehicles, correct, when they're in a foot chase? Well, I mean, you have an opportunity to decide whether or not you want to leave your vehicle. How important is it, right? Because sure. there was a passenger in that car. So understand, when I run away from my car, if my keys are still in the ignition, it's possible that someone could take my car. So you have to use a little common sense when you think about the tactics and weigh that against what do I have and what do I know. At the end of the day then, and we look at the entire video and what we have, the entire evidence, does this not speak to us then of an overzealousness of a police officer? But we are back once again to the training issue because it shouldn't be this, this destructive in the last couple of moments. I got 30 seconds. I don't know that training is an issue here. I think common sense is, is, is an issue. And I think it was a matter of why are you running from me and I can't catch you. And so now remember, contempt of cop, there's a price to pay when you run from me. And in this case, it was death. And then again, that contempt of cop, you and I have talked about many times, that is something else because there are so many people right now saying, again, if he didn't run, he wouldn't have gotten killed. I understand that, but the man got killed for absolutely nothing. That in itself right there is the biggest issue to focus on. Sergeant Cheryl Darcy, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Guaranteed, we'll continue this conversation. Thank you, Ed. Have a great weekend. You do the same. Take care. Do you know where your tax dollars go? Education, military, sure. What about hotel rooms, banquet parties, and an open bar? Ah, uh, government waste, your friend and mine. Next on Midpoint.